If you're looking to create a professional WordPress website for your business, but it's your first time using WordPress and you have zero experience, then this comprehensive from start to finish WordPress tutorial is designed for you. In this video, I'll cover, explain, and walk you through setting up your account with Elementor Hosting, getting familiar with WordPress, leveraging professional website templates, and how you can design your website pages quickly and with ease using a visual page building experience. And the great thing is no coding, WordPress experience, or design skills are needed in order for you to follow along with this tutorial to create your own stunning website for your business. Okay, so before we go ahead and launch into this WordPress tutorial, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already, or if you're new to this channel, and that way you'll stay updated with actionable videos and tutorials designed to equip you with the skills, knowledge, and tools to help your small business thrive online. And with that happy note out the way, let's go ahead and navigate through the step-by-step -step process of creating your own WordPress website. Now, before we get started and set up, create and customize your WordPress website using Elementor Hosting, simply head over to your browser and type in elementor.com or feel free to click the link in our description below this video and that's gonna take you here. Now, before we continue, I just wanna say a big thank you to Elementor for sponsoring this video. My team and I use Elementor every day for our clients as well as for our own websites and therefore jumped at the opportunity to create a sponsored tutorial. So again, thank you, Elementor for sponsoring this video. Okay, so before we start creating our WordPress website, you first need to understand what exactly Elementor Hosting is. Well, Elementor Hosting is an all-in-one platform dedicated to helping anyone create a stunning WordPress website without having to deal with many of the technical activities involved in launching a WordPress website. With just a few clicks, you can set up website hosting, connect a professional domain name, and launch your WordPress website ready to go with plugins and professional templates that you can then customize exactly the way that you like. Every WordPress website needs a place to host it online, so why not choose a hosting provider that covers everything? Okay, so let's first take a look at the pricing for WordPress hosting. Navigate down and click on WordPress hosting, and then navigate down to these plans. Now, the advantage of using Elementor Hosting lies in its essential performance focus features, including top-of-the-line cloud hosting powered by Google, already set up Cloudflare CDN for optimal speed and website performance, and you already have an SSL installed for site security and 24-7 monitoring and automatic daily backups for peace of mind. Elementor has created this as an all-in-one WordPress solution, especially ideal for beginners looking for high performance, ease of use, and exceptional value for money when it comes to creating a WordPress website. Now, when you get started with Elementor Hosting, you also have access to Elementor Pro, which is a paid plugin that is included at no extra charge. Essentially, this allows you to leverage one of, if not the most popular drag and drop page editors for WordPress, meaning that you can easily customize your website pages visually from the front end without touching any code. And don't worry, I'll show you exactly how you can use Elementor Pro for creating and customizing your website pages shortly. So to get started, simply navigate down to either this business option here, which is popular for WooCommerce. This is if you wanna sell products online, or you can simply navigate over to basic and get started over here. For most businesses, I recommend getting started with the business plan. Now, it's also important to note that you do have a 30 day money back guarantee if you decide that Elementor is not for you. So go ahead and click on buy now, then go ahead and take your time to add your details. Then once you've created an account and added all your payment information, simply navigate down and click on pay now. And that's gonna take you here. Simply navigate down the page and locate, start creating your website. Then here you'll be asked a few questions. For today's tutorial, we're just gonna navigate down and click on skip. Then go ahead and add your business name and then click on next. Then here we have the option to select a pre-made website kit. These are professionally designed website templates that you can choose and then customize the way that you like. And I'm gonna show you how to choose a pre-made template from within WordPress. So for now, we're gonna navigate down and click on, I'd rather start from scratch. Then here we just need to give WordPress a moment to load your website and then navigate up to let's go. And congratulations, just like that, you'll be taken to your Elementor hosting dashboard. And if we navigate up here, you'll see your WordPress website that's ready to go for you to start customizing. Make sure that you verify your email if you see a notification up above. 
Okay, so first things first, what we're gonna do is navigate over to manage this website. And over here we have the default branded Elementor.cloud domain name. But what we want to do is change this to a custom domain. And I'll show you this shortly. Then down here we have site lock. So at the moment you can see by default this is turned on. This means that our website is currently offline. And once you've finished customizing your website and you're ready to publish your website online, then this is what you want to turn off. However, let's say that you want to share your website before you go live with your team members. Then what you can do is navigate down here and copy this pin code and you can share that with your team and then all they need to do is add the pin and they can access and view the site before it's live publicly. Okay, so what we're gonna do is navigate over to manage domains and this is where you can connect a custom domain name if you've already purchased a domain name from a different provider. You can go ahead and connect that domain with your website or you can go ahead and buy a new domain. And it's important to set up a custom domain for your website. This is going to help with your branding and professionalism. Next, what we're gonna do is navigate over to email account. And this is where you want to authenticate your branded emails once you've set up your domain name. Then below email account, we have backups. If we click here, this is where you can access all the automatic backups and you can also manually backup your website. Okay, so now what we wanna do is navigate back to all websites and then navigate down to your website and click on open WordPress dashboard. And before we launch into WordPress, there are just a few changes that we need to make. Simply navigate over to Elementor on the left hand side and then click on settings. Then navigate over to features and then navigate down to editor top bar and then turn this on to active and then come down to nested elements and again select active. And then if we navigate further down, we want to locate menu and then click on active here. Then we want to save these settings, navigate down to the bottom and click on save changes and head back to your dashboard by clicking on dashboard. Okay, so what exactly is WordPress and why should you use it to build your website? Well, if you didn't know already, WordPress is the most popular website builder or CMS in the world. It's open source and free to use with limitless possibilities when creating a website. However, in saying that, there are many paid and free add-ons to really get the most out of your WordPress website, like a custom domain name, plugins, themes, templates, hosting, and more. Again, what I like about Elementor Hosting is everything is taken care of and 99% of the time, you will not need to pay for additional WordPress add-ons. Everything that you need to launch a stunning website is covered with Elementor Hosting. Okay, so let's understand the fundamentals of our WordPress dashboard. If we navigate up to hosting, that's gonna take us back to our Elementor hosting dashboard. Then if we navigate down to updates, this is where we can see updates for WordPress themes and plugins. It's important to make sure that all your plugins, themes, and your WordPress version are up to date. So ideally you wanna update these at least once per month. Then down here, you can see all your recent activity. Below this, we have posts. So this is where you can manage all your posts for your website. Then below posts, we have media, and this is where you can manage all the media associated to your website. These could be files, images, videos that you've uploaded to your WordPress website. Then below media, we have pages. These are your website pages. Again, similar to posts, this is where you can manage all your pages. So think about pages as your pillar pages for your website. And then posts on the other hand are updates that you can create on a regular basis. Then if we navigate down to comments, this is where you can manage all your comments. Then we have Elementor. This is the current Elementor plugin that we have installed. And then we have Elementor settings and other information down here, which we'll cover later on. Below Elementor, we have templates. These are your saved templates or templates that you have downloaded and used for your website. Then we also have appearance, and this is where we can install a theme. For example, if we click on themes, that's gonna take us to this one theme that is currently active. And this is the recommended theme if you're using the Elementor page builder, which is what we're using. And you do not need to customize your theme because what we're going to do is use templates to customize our website. Now you can also add additional themes, either free themes or paid themes if you like. We're gonna leave that for now and then navigate down to plugins. Think about plugins as additional features that you can add to your website. And there are thousands of plugins that you can choose from. For example, you could add a chat-based plugin so that your website visitors can chat directly with you on your website. You can also add an Instagram feed to your website using a plugin. And if you wanna sell products through your WordPress website, then again, you will need to install a plugin. 
So again, plugins are an easy way to add additional features to your website. Then below plugins, we have users. This is where you can manage all your users. If you wanna add an additional admin, you can go ahead and do that here. And then we have tools, settings, and we can collapse the menu down here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is navigate up to templates and then locate kit library. And if you're a beginner and it's your first time using WordPress and Elementor, it's recommended that you choose a website kit. Remember, these are professional templates that you can choose and then customize the way that you like. These website kits already have professional website pages that you can then dive in and customize the way that you like with the Elementor page builder. As you can see, we have some categories over on the left hand side and we can also search for a website kit. I'm going to type in business and have a browse through some of the website kits that are related to business websites. Now, for the purpose of today's tutorial, I wanna create a consulting website for a business called Stu's Consulting. However, it doesn't matter what type of website that you wanna create, you can still follow along with this tutorial. Now, if you like the look of any of these templates, all you need to do is simply click on the template and you can view what that pre-made template looks like. Then navigate through each of the website pages. Make sure you like the look of each website page. You can see that this template has a basic menu and then we have a few different pages. So I like the look of this website template. Here you can see we have a contact page that has a booking form. I'm happy with this. Now you can also preview how each of these website templates look like across different devices. Now each of these website kits are responsive across these different devices. At the moment we have desktop selected. If I navigate across and click on tablet, we can preview what this website page looks like on tablet as well as on mobile. Again, you can preview the content, you can preview the animations for each of these different widgets and you can hover over each of the different elements to see how they function. So what I'm gonna do is navigate back over to desktop and I'm gonna use this template by navigating over to apply kit. Then navigate down and click on apply all. Then select enable, give Elementor a moment to set up your new website kit and congratulations just like that, your kit is now live on your site. What we're gonna do is navigate down to close and then navigate up to the top left hand corner and click on your website. And this is how our new WordPress website looks like after we've added the website kit. Again, I can navigate through each of the website pages if I like before I start customizing each of these pages. Now, in order for us to customize these website pages, these template pages with our own content, all we need to do is select the page. So currently we're on the home page and I want to customize this home page. To do that, simply navigate up to edit with Elementor and then exit out of this. And like I mentioned, Elementor hosting comes with Elementor Pro, which is a visual drag and drop page builder. So let's understand how this page builder works. Well, first we wanna take a look at the structure. Now this section here shows you the structure of your website page. For example, if we click on hero and then click on this arrow here, you can see that this hero section contains a container, another container, an image and icon. And you can see that this is the hero section here. Now, if we click on any of these elements on the right hand side, for example, if I click on image here, that's gonna highlight this image widget here. And then if I navigate over to the left hand side, this is where we can edit the content of that particular widget. For example, I can change the image here if I like by uploading my own image or using an image from my library. I can change the image size, alignment, add a caption and link this image if I like. If we navigate over to style, we can change the style of this image as well as advanced options over here. And each of the elements that you click on either on your website page here or under structure will have different options over on the left hand side for you to customize. Now I can also click on any of these elements. For example, if I click on this element here, you can see that that is a heading widget and I can simply navigate over to the left hand side and change this content and change this to your all in one digital consultant. I can then navigate over to style and then I can change the text color, typography and more down here. Now, if I navigate up to text color, you can see I have two options. The first is the global styles. If I click here, I can choose out of the global styles and these are the colors that make up this entire website kit. Or I can navigate over to custom styles and click here and choose a custom color if I like. However, I'm going to navigate back over to global styles and then click on primary. 
Again, you can do the same with typography. You can see we have global styles here. If I click here, these are my global styles for this website. So at the moment we have hero headline selected. I could change this to primary. However, I'm happy with the default style. So I'm gonna navigate back down to hero headline. And again, we have advanced options over here. However, I'm gonna keep everything as it is for this header. Then if we navigate down the page, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this text editor here. So this is a text editor widget. And I'm going to navigate over to the left-hand side and change this text. And I've added, we are the number one full service digital consultant for local businesses. I also have these different formatting options up above. I can bold if I like, add italic, underline, and I can change the formatting here, but I'm happy with paragraph. And if I like, I could also add an image below this text. However, what I'm going to do is simply remove the bold formatting and then click on edit with AI. Navigate down and click on I approve and then get started. Now Elementor offers AI capabilities, meaning that you can leverage AI to help you create content. For example, here is the initial sentence that we added. We can navigate down and we can simplify language, make it longer, make it shorter, fix and grammar. We can also change the tone and translate this content to a different language. What I'm going to do is make this sentence longer and Elementor is going to leverage AI to create unique content based on my prompt. Then what I can do is simply customize this text and make edits if I like before I use this text. I'm gonna navigate up here, highlight this section and delete it. Again, take the time to read through your AI generated content because it's not always correct. Okay, so I'm happy with that for now. So I'm gonna navigate down and click on use text. And that's gonna add this AI generated text. Now, if you wanna learn more about using Elementor AI, then what I'll do is add a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description for you to check out. Okay, so I'm actually gonna navigate over to this content and quickly tidy it up slightly. Okay, so I've quickly gone ahead and added basic formatting. Now I'm gonna navigate over to this button and click here. And that's gonna open up the button widget over on the left hand side. First, under content, I'm gonna go ahead and change the text to contact us. Then click on link down here, and then under type, make sure that you have content selected, then navigate down to search and select, and start typing in the page that you wanna to connect to this button. And here we have the contact page, I'm gonna go ahead and click on contact, and I'm happy with that. We can change the alignment, size, and icon. At the moment, there is no icon selected, so I'm gonna navigate over to icon library, and then choose an icon. I like the look of this basic icon, so I'm gonna select this icon and then click on insert and then navigate over to icon position and click on after. I can change the icon spacing if I like, but I'm happy with this. Then navigate up to style. And again, I can change the button typography. I can change the text color, background type and color. Now, if we hover over this button, you can see that this is the hover effect. If I navigate over to hover and I can change the text color, background type, color and border color, and that's gonna change this effect over here. Now there's no hover animation at the moment, but I can navigate down and I can select any of these hover animations if I like. I'm gonna go ahead and click on grow. And now if we hover over this button, you can see that the hover animation has this growth effect. And I want all the buttons on this page to have the same style changes that I made with this button. So what I can do is right click, then navigate down and click on copy and then locate another button on this page and then simply right click again and then navigate down and click on paste style. And that's gonna add that style in here. As you can see, there is now that hover growth effect. I can do the same with another button. If there is another button, here's another one. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and click on paste style. And as you can see, that button now has that growth effect. Essentially, what you can do is make changes to the style of different elements, and then you can copy the style and paste that style on other elements. Okay, let's navigate back up to the top. Now, if we navigate over to the left-hand side, we can also drag and drop different elements. So if I navigate down here, let's say I wanted to add another text element. What I can do is simply click on the text element and then drag that over here, and then wait until I see this little pink line appear in the place that I want to add this widget and then simply release. And that's gonna add that widget into the container structure over on the right hand side. Okay, so I'm actually going to navigate down here and right click and then delete this widget. So what you wanna do is take the time to navigate through each of your website pages and customize the different widgets as well as the different sections on your website pages. Remember you can see the structure of your website pages over on the right hand side 
and you can make any changes that you like to each of the different widgets over on the left hand side. Now, if you want to dive deeper into customizing your website pages with Elementor, then what I'll do is add a few tutorials down below in the description for you to check out. Now, once you've made any changes to your website pages, make sure that you click on publish. And that's going to save those changes. Remember, our website is currently not live online. In order to make our website public and discoverable online, we will need to head back to Elementor Hosting, which we'll do towards the end of this video. Now let's navigate back up to the top. Again with the left hand editor, we can make it larger for us to work on if we like, or we can make it smaller, or we can click here and that's going to hide this panel. Okay, so let's expand that panel again. We can also navigate over to the far right hand side and we can preview all our changes if we like. Next, what we want to do is make sure that all the changes that we're making on our website pages are responsive across devices. So in order to do that, simply navigate over to the different device sizes. If I click on tablet, that's going to show me what this website page looks like on tablet. And you can make changes to your content specifically for each device. For example, if we navigate down and click on this button, and then navigate over to advanced, we can make changes to how this button appears on tablet. For example, we have the width down here. I'm gonna drag that out and I'm happy with that. I can also change the order if I like and these other options. If I navigate down to responsive, I can choose to hide specific elements on different devices. So I can choose to hide this button on desktop, on tablet or on mobile if I like. This just depends on the nature of your content. Again, let's navigate down the page and I wanna make this button smaller. So I'm gonna navigate over to advanced and then click on width and I'm happy with that. Then if we navigate down even further, we have this section, what I can do is click here. And for this entire section, what I can do is I can change the width, min height. I can also change the gaps. So for example, if I navigate over here and click up, that's gonna make those sections appear like this. I'm also going to make the width wider and I'm happy with that. And I can do the same with any of these other elements. If I navigate over to mobile, again, I can make these changes that will just show on mobile if I like. Now, if you make changes, make sure that you have the mobile portal next to the item that you want to change. For example, if we navigate up to the top and click on this option and then navigate over to content, you can see that we do not have this mobile icon next to HTML tag. So the tag will remain the same across all devices. Okay, so what we're gonna do is head back to desktop. Now, if I want to remove this structure view, I can click on exit. And if I want to re-enable the structure, all I need to do is click on structure. Now, if I'm currently editing an element and I want to add a new element, all I need to do is navigate up to add element, and then I can drag and drop the elements over on the left-hand side. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on publish and then navigate up to the header and we want to quickly customize the header. Navigate over to the left-hand side and add your logo by clicking here and then coming down and clicking change site logo. And that's gonna take us to the site identity. This is where we want to add our site name, site description, and then our site logo and site favicon. I'm gonna quickly add my site name and then add a site description. Then go ahead and add your site logo. I'm going to upload a logo and here's the logo that I want to use. And with any images that you upload, you want to add an alt text. This is important for SEO. For this alt text, I'm just gonna add my business name and then come down and click on select. Then navigate over to site favicon. This is where you want to add a square image. This image will display in your browser. I'm going to upload and use this favicon here and then type in choose consulting favicon. Then hit select. Then go ahead and click on save changes. Then navigate up here, exit out of here. And what we need to do is reload this page for our logo to display. So go ahead and do that now. And as you can see, our logo is up here. I'm gonna click here and click on the logo and then navigate over to styles and then change the height down here as well as the width. And then navigate down to CSS filter, which is causing my logo to go dark. And then I'm going to click on back to default and I'm happy with my logo. Then what we're gonna do is navigate up to publish and then navigate all the way down the page to locate our footer. Here we have our footer down here. What we wanna do is click here to edit the footer. Now the footer and header will display the same on each of our website pages. First, what I'm gonna do is click on the logo and I wanna make changes to this logo, but what I'm gonna do is navigate up to the top and then click on my header and then right click here and click on copy and then navigate all the way back down to my footer 
click here and then right click on the logo and then click on paste style and I'm happy with that. Then I'm going to navigate over to this menu item, right click and delete and then delete this container and then click on publish. I'm also going to remove this view and then navigate back down. Then what I can do is also click on this form widget and you can change the name of the form. At the moment it's mailing list form and then down here we can add additional form items. At the moment we just want to collect the email in the footer form section. We can navigate down to buttons and we can change the submit button if we like. I'm happy with that. Then we can click on actions after submit and after a visitor adds their email and then clicks yes please we can choose to collect submissions and these submissions will be added to the submissions within Elementor. If we click on email, the email will be sent to tutorials at cindio.co.nz. We have the subject and message. Now if we click on actions after submit, this is ideally where we want to capture contacts for our email list. So if you're using an email marketing software like MailChimp for example, you can click here, then navigate down and click on the correct option. So for me, I would select MailChimp because I already use MailChimp to build my email list. So I want to continue to grow my email list inside MailChimp by sending contacts there. Okay, so that's completely up to you. Now what we can also do is navigate down here and then rather than clicking add new container, what we're going to do is click on add template. And at the moment you can see we have footer selected and this is where we can choose different templates that we can add to our website. And let's say I like the look of this footer here, what I can do is go ahead and click on insert and then click on apply. And that's going to add this new footer that I can now start customizing. What I would do is navigate up here and delete this footer. And then I'm going to drag this and place that below this footer here and then navigate up here and then I can start customizing this footer if I like. Again, what you want to do is spend the time customizing your footer. I'm going to publish this for now and then click up here. And then what we can do to head back to our dashboard is simply click here and then click on exit to WordPress. And that's going to take us to this page where we can navigate down and edit with Elementor if we like. Now I'm going to navigate back over here and then under pages, you can see all our current pages. What I'm going to do is navigate over to contact. And that's going to take us to the back end of our contact page where we can now edit with Elementor. Remember you can enable Elementor from the front end on your website or from the back end inside the Gutenberg editor. I'm going to go ahead and click on edit with Elementor. And again, similar to what I just showed you in terms of customizing your website pages and elements with Elementor, you want to navigate through each of your website pages and make sure that you customize each of your website pages before you publish your website. So here on the contact page, I want to focus on this form on the right hand side. If I click on this form, that's going to allow me to customize this information. I'm going to change the form name to contact form. I'm happy with the full name, phone, email and message input. You can see those on the right hand side. If I want to add another item, I can do so by clicking here and then adding the input type. This could be an email URL. If I'm asking for a website, it could be a checkbox. So for example, if I click here and this could be service one, two and three, and then I'm going to add a label and I'm happy with that. I'm going to navigate over to publish. And if I want to delete any of these options, I can simply click on the X. Again, you want to navigate through each of these different options. You can customize the button, the actions after the submit. So again, I want to collect submissions and I also want the email to be sent directly to my email. So this is my email for my primary inbox and I can change the subject. I'm going to change this to new message from the contact form. And then the message includes all fields. Again, you want to navigate down and make changes to all your contact information as well as add all your appropriate links. Okay, so I'm going to navigate up to publish and remember you want to preview all your changes across different devices to ensure that your changes are responsive. Now, what about adding a new page? Well, what you can do is navigate up to this section here and then come down and click on add new page or you can navigate over to the left hand side and you can click here and then come down and click on exit to WordPress. Then I can navigate back over to my dashboard and then click on add new. And this page is going to be a service page called digital strategy. Then click on save. Then here what we're going to do is navigate up to settings and then navigate down to hide title. Yes. Okay. So now we have a blank page, including our header as well as our footer. Now what we can do is simply go ahead and click plus and then add a structure. I'm going to go ahead and click on this down structure here 
And then we can simply go ahead and click in here and then search for the widget that we want to add. For example, it could be a video and then drag and drop. Again, I can navigate down to this section and click on add widget here. And I'm gonna add this more advanced structure and then click up here and then add this text editor. And then click on this text editor and drag and drop. Over on this section, I can go ahead and click here. And this time I could add a image or a button. I'm gonna go ahead and add an image. And then what you would do is customize each of these different widgets, just like I showed you with the Elementor Builder. Now you can also navigate down here and you can click on templates and you can add template blocks if you like, or you can add template pages. This is completely up to you. Maybe you just wanted to add a block, then you can search for the specific category that you're after. For example, maybe it's benefits down here, and then you can choose one of those blocks. I'm going to go ahead and insert this block template. And as you can see, we now have this block template that we can customize the way that we like. And again, you can add a complete page template if you like by clicking here again, and then navigating over to pages, and then selecting the page template that you want to add. And as you can see, we have the entire page down here, as well as the other blocks and elements that we added earlier. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just gonna go ahead and publish this and then navigate back to my WordPress dashboard because now what I wanna do is add this page to my primary menu. To do that, navigate back over to the left-hand side and then click on exit to WordPress. And then again, navigate up to the top left-hand corner, click here, and under pages, you can see the new page that we just created. Then navigate down to appearance and then click on menus. Here you can see our current main menu. What we're gonna do is navigate over to the left-hand side and then select the page that you just created or that you just want to add to your menu and then navigate down to add to menu. Then because this is a service under services, I'm going to click and then drag this menu item and then add that below social media. So now services has two sub items. You can also add a post if you like. You can also create a custom link and you can also add categories to your menu. So I'm happy with this for now. So I'm gonna navigate down and click on save menu and then head back to my website. And as you can see, if we navigate over to services, you can see we now have two pages, social media and digital strategy. Now, how can you further grow your website with SEO? So once you've published your website, you want to focus on SEO, search engine optimization, so that your website can be discovered online. And a big part of this is all about creating content in the form of blog posts. And if you're interested in learning how to create SEO optimized blog posts for your website, then what I'll do is add a tutorial down below in the description, which will guide you through the process of creating a optimized blog post using Elementor. Okay, so once you've completed customizing your website and you're ready to launch your website online, what we wanna do is head back to our Elementor hosting dashboard. To do that, navigate over to the left-hand side, click here, and then navigate down to hosting, and then click on hosting settings. You can also head over to my.elementor.com to arrive back into your Elementor hosting dashboard. Then here under overview, what you can do is simply navigate over to this section here, site lock, and turn that off. And that's gonna publish your website live online for it to be discovered. Now in terms of support, if you have any questions, you can simply navigate down to the bottom right hand corner, click here, and you can start a conversation. They provide 24 seven chat and email support. So if you come across any problems or you have any questions that you wanna ask Elementor support, you can always jump into the back end of your Elementor hosting and enable the chat support. And they typically reply in just a few minutes. However, that is everything I wanted to cover to help you create a stunning WordPress website with Elementor hosting. Again, I will add relevant WordPress and Elementor tutorials down below in the description to help you get the most out of your WordPress website. And there we have it guys, that is it for this comprehensive WordPress tutorial for beginners. Again, I just wanna say thank you to Elementor for sponsoring this video. If you have any questions guys, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this channel and that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.